Hello, hello. Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, I hope you can hear me. This is uh, my very first live stream. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I, I wanted to do a quick uh, sound of mic check. So uh, sound off and chat if you can if you can hear me and say hello too. Uh, I can see you. Oh, let me see. Hold on. I can I can barely see you because I thought these would be a really good idea. I was going to open by saying welcome to the future. You can tell us the future because I'm wearing these sunglasses from the 1980s, but uh, I can't actually see anything with these, with these on, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them off. <laughs> who's, who's here? Uh, Reverse Zero, I see you, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Fudge Triple Seven, I see you too. Uh, who else is here? Uh, head of Metal, uh, Conrad, I see you. Ekin, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, let me know in the in the chat if you can hear me. I hope you can. Yes, you can hear me. Fantastic. Thank you so much. DM Explains is going to be modding for us, uh, and it's, it's so good to see so many of my patrons joining and supporting. My patrons, I gotta say, were instrumental in helping me get first purchase the tech, second use the tech, and and third, you know, help me with moderating and, and agree to join in and make it so that it's not a, a zero participant stream. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, my patrons are uh, essentially the best people in the world. I need to know that. I've got things planned uh, to entertain you on this live stream. It's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna unbox the most ridiculous, or one of the most ridiculous, the only, the only competing ridiculous thing I can think of in the board game world that's even close to the Anachrony Infinity Box, which we're going to look at in just a second, is uh, the Cthulhu Death May Die statue, which is a minifig that's about this tall, and you fight Cthulhu on Cthulhu somehow. That's ridiculous, but the Anachrony Infinity Box uh, is... If not a close second, it's it's more ridiculous than that, as we'll see. Uh, we're going to have snack time. I've got a special snack uh, that we can eat together. I'm going to eat it. You're going to virtually eat it, or you can eat your own snack at home. Uh, I might do a poetry reading. I have a rebus puzzle for you to solve. All kinds of stuff. It's going to be really exciting, <laughs> depending on what you consider exciting. Uh, hi, Don. Good. Thanks Thanks for joining me. Side Noise, I see you too. Th oh, Side Noir, sorry. I see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Let's just crack right into it. This is a lift from the knees. This is uh, the subject of, uh, of today's stream. This is the Anachrony Infinity Box. And I brought it on the table last week when I, when I unboxed the Terraforming Mars big box. Just because it was kind of like, Terraforming Mars is like, hey, we got a big box. And Mind Clash is like, hold my beer. Look at this thing. And even the picture I noticed in the promo thumbnail that I used for this stream is like half the thickness of this. Look, this, look at this thing. This is crazy. Uh, I realize some of you joining us, I think Head of Metal mentioned that he or she has this game and is like, that's cool. David Turchy rules. I really love it. Some of you don't have it and you may have the base game or some of you have never even heard of Anachrony. So indulge me just for a second for the people who have not heard of Anachrony or Mind Clash Games. Mind Clash Games is a board game publisher and I first became aware of them with their first game, uh, Tricarian, which looks like this. And it's I was so disappointed when I bought it, I'll tell you, because I was in the store and it was down to three games. And as usual, my wife was telling me, you have to leave, you've been there for four hours. So I, I eventually just, you know, I was looking things up on Board Game Geek because you gotta go by that, you know, Board Game Geek rating. If it's below a 7.3, who wants it? It's garbage, nobody ever touch it. <laughs> it's a complete failure. So I saw this, it had a good rating. I ended up walking out of the store with it. And then like immediately after, leaving the store, I realized it had been a Kickstarter. And I was like, oh no, that's the worst. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but ratings for games that people have paid bazillions of bucks for on Kickstarter uh, are a little higher than people who'd go into a store honestly, and I shouldn't say honestly, but spend their money. You just see ratings for Kickstarter games before people have even received the thing. They're just like, this is gonna be awesome, 8.9 or whatever. So that's, you know, so when I saw that Tricarian was a Kickstarter game, I was like, that stinks, but I'll give it a shot. Got it home, uh, played it, and it's it's wicked. I loved it. It's so cool, and it's like kitchen sink game design. And people have faulted it for that. That ah, there's too much going on. Like too much. Give me more. So that's that's Tricarian. I made a bunch of videos on Tricarian. I did a how to play for it. I talked about the expansion. I talked about the solo mode, and I did unboxings for it. And I talked about the the little mini expansions that they do. All kinds of stuff. 
and uh, somebody said, well, you should get in touch with MindClash. I'm sure that they would want you to talk about Anachrony and you'd probably like it. So I did. And MindClash sent me, uh, and they said, do you want us to send you the Infinity Box? Because we're going to fulfill that through Kickstarter. This is a Kickstarter product, if you couldn't tell. And I said, sure. And they said, or do you want us to send you Anachrony? And then you can, you know, play Anachrony and maybe do a video for it if you want to. I say, well, yeah, let's do that. So I did a video for Anachrony. Let me show you just the, what the base game looks like. And this is just when they come out with the second edition. So this isn't what you would have originally bought in stores. You would get the Kickstarter or you would go get the retail copy. Uh, and then what they did was they have, you know, so much stuff for Anachrony. I'm just checking out. Yeah. Oh, hey, Davo, I didn't say hi to you. Sorry. Uh, you, uh, Ekin says, oh, man, I missed my name down on the Patreon crew. Uh, Hello, I'm saying hello, and I'm, I'm, you're probably not hearing me because I'm mispronouncing your name, as I always do, I can, but if we'll talk about that later. This thing, so the retail version of Anachrony uh, was different than this. It had more stuff in it, and it was at a higher price tag. So what MindClash decided to do was take stuff out and lower the price tag so that you could sort of get people's feet in the door, and then if they really liked it, then they could spend you know, extra money uh, kicking out for all the uh, all the other stuff. So this was the second edition and they excised uh, a, a solo mode, I believe, and a couple of other things. I mentioned it in my in my unboxing video of that. And then they have, what a do do? This is the classic expansion pack. So there are multiple big expansions to this game. This was the first one and this is the second edition of the first one. Hopefully you're following along, that's not too complicated. And then it's a worker placement game and you can either have <laughs> the cardboard uh, workers uh, in the base game, or you can spring for this thing, which is plastic exosuit miniatures. And you think, well, that's audacious. Why <laughs> do, is that necessary? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, yes, it's absolutely necessary. Without this, you've got hexagonal cardboard tiles and you've got little workers and you put them on the tiles and that represents an exosuit and you send it to not outer space but like a, like a central town that's been ravaged by a meteor. Uh, fine. With these things though, you take your worker and you s slot it in the back and now it's, w it's wearing the exosuit and you put the exosuit in the hostile environment of the central town and it's like, whoa, cool. Uh, there's a little picture right there on the back of the, the workers going into the exosuits and of course you can paint them and you can make, so this, I mean, Mind Clash is all about making their games, uh, just overboard, just overboard with production values and just making them cool, cool, cool. So they sent this to me and they said, we'll send you this thing too. It contains everything that this contains and more besides. I'm like, oh, you sure you want? Yes, yes. So they, so they said, so now I have multiple copies of this and uh, they said, oh, you can, you know, you can give this away. And uh, that, that's a nice thought, isn't it? If I were a good person, what I'm really going to do is I really want to paint these miniatures, but I don't want to wreck them. But now I think I've got two copies of the miniatures. So I can just, I can paint like happy faces on these things and go crazy all I want and, and not worry about messing them up. So these are my trial red miniatures. And then we'll see, we'll see about shipping out uh, this uh, gently used version of it. Uh, to be fair, I have only ever played the game once because I got it out. I've been playing games with my family especially because of the pandemic. Uh, what does that can say? Oh, man. oh no, yeah. Yeah, I saw it rerun. Don't think it's there. No biggie there. Oh, are you talking about the patron scroll? I'm positive it's in there. I think you're the last one on the patron scroll. I was just noticing that there's a little Patreon animation scroll. Don't worry, it loops. If you didn't see yourself, you're in there. And I believe, are you at the, are you at the very end? I, I don't know. I put it together last night. You're in there. Don't worry. What was I saying? I've only played the game once because I've been playing with my family and I can just tell when I grab a game and I'm about to spring something new on them. I looked at Anachrony and I thought, there is no way that my teen and preteen daughters are going to enjoy this at all. Uh, so we put it out and I, I enjoy the heck out of it because it's absolutely my kind of game. Then is a little bit, a little bit touch and go. Uh, so I've only played it once. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what I think of it as we get into it. But I thought it would be really fun to put this, which is now the biggest board game in my collection, up against the smallest board game in my collection. Which if you've been watching the channel, you know what it is. It's Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxy. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> I, don't know, I thought that would be amusing. 
Maybe I was wrong. Uh, what else does this contain? They took all of the components and they upgraded them. So cardboard has turned into plastic and plastic has turned into metal and other cardboard has turned into resin. Uh, but this, they say that this contains every, like anachrony, everything, everything that was ever made for anachrony. But they lie because there's more. They sent me more. Check this out. <laughs> this, let me just get overhead. This is the anachrony resin energy source pack. So, uh, these are uh, uh, ways that you fuel your exosuits. So they've, they've turned them from cardboard into resin or plastic. And then these cool things, and they'll look better once I get them out of the bag, but these are like energy cores that they've upgraded from cardboard that look super duper cool. So that's one thing they sent me. They sent me a promo pack, which contains additional content. And really, if you're not happy with the amount of content in this thing, uh, there's, there's got to be something because <laughs> there's so there's so much there's so much they're going and if you know if you know Tricarian you know what's what's happening and then they did something really really smart and really really sneaky which I thought was I mean I sell things to people I think this is brilliant there are four different currencies in the game one's a premium currency like so many games have you know this game has the ruby or the diamond and all the other resources are like sheep eyeballs or whatever so they have four currencies the TUG that's uh what is it tungsten uranium and gold I think and then there's neutronium which is the fancy purple resource so those are all plastic cubes but they made the neutronium the purple the fancy one metal so you get metal neutronium in there but check out how, this, how smart this is. Then they put out this metal cube set so that the TUG, the tungsten uranium and gold, are now all metal. So they just, isn't that smart? Insidiously smart. They give you a taste of that of the metal cube life in this thing. And they're like, you know, you could have them all metal. And then they sell this extra stuff. So you can, you can, you can get all this stuff. At the time they sent this to me, they had a few more of these kicking around in the warehouse and you could order them. And I hope the Mind Clash games isn't, very annoyed at me for taking so long to unbox this thing but you gotta know i haven't even opened my christmas presents yet and it's now just turned july so i've just had this huge backlog that i've been fighting through the entire half of the year i'm only only getting to it now so here we are finally finally unboxing like i said this is more about the journey so if you're like Un unbox the damn game already that's it's not it's not what we do here, is it? I don't have to learn it. Let me just check the check the chat here. Uh, uh, is not in there though. He I can thinks his name's not in the in the scroll. Oh, cut off at the end. Oh no, that's possible. I have to check it. Oh well, I've just mentioned your name about five times, so people. <laughs> We see you, we recognize you, we know you, and I'll get that fixed. I'm so sorry about that. It was midnight last night as I was trying to arrange it. On the back of the of the enormous box, uh, it tells us about all the things that we get. Of course, we get the core game and we get the exosuit miniatures. We're going to get the Fractures of Time module, which is the second big, sort of bigger expansion to the game. Uh, we get the Doomsday module, which is, I think, one of the things that they excised from the original base game to make it cheaper and get more people involved. Uh, Guardians of the Council module, I don't know. Pioneers of the New Earth, no idea. Hypersync Future Actions module, your guess is as good as mine. Quantum Loops module, I don't know. Intrigues of the Council module, do you need more modules? Yes, you do. Two solo modes with expansion support. <laughs> there. Uh, unique custom components. And the thing that I'm really excited about, because I, I realize now in my old age I've become a storage nerd, and if a board game comes with nice plastic trays with snap-on lids and you can store it horizontally or vertically and everything fits in beautifully, I just I just love that. And you might have read the disappointment on my face when I looked at the uh, Terraforming Mars big box uh, last week, and it did all fit. There weren't there weren't molded areas for all the pieces, and there weren't finger grooves in order to get your hands in and pull everything up without bulging the box out or wrecking anything. They so there were, you know there were a few things they missed there, and I was a little bit little bit weepy about it. But if I know these guys and I know the Tricarian Collector's Edition which I unboxed for you in another video and reboxed because there was not a key telling you how to put everything back in the box. But man, that was a production and a half. If you see my Find the Fun videos, 
Trickerian Collector's Edition is over my left shoulder because I just love it and I wanted to give it a, a place of, of privilege in my board game collection. Here we are, finally, the main, the main event, the big show. Um, but first, wait, I have, I have a question for you. I gotta hit a keystroke. Uh, my question, is my keyboard even working? Yes, what is the most audacious board game in your collection? Do you have the Tricarian Collector's Edition? Do you have maybe that Cthulhu Death May Die gigantic Cthulhu statue? Uh, I want to know from you in the chat. Please tell me uh, what has the most bells and whistles. I have almost all of the bells and whistles for Scythe. That's another one where you can go completely off the deep end. I don't think I'll get the metal mechs uh, for that because that's a bit, bit preposterous. Uh, but here we are. I'm nervous. I, can you tell I'm nervous? I'm nervous because it's my first live stream. I'm nervous because I'm opening this big old thing. I heard there was a thunderstorm this morning and I thought, well, that's just great. I'll be doing this and the power will go out in the middle of it. I don't even know. Oh, oh it's been so long. <laughs> and it's... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, it's it's high time too because when I brought this out, oh, look at this. So they, I don't know if they knew what all was going to be included before they printed the box. So this is a completely separate sort of take it off thing. Or maybe, I don't know why, I don't know, decisions. Uh, yeah, but when I, br when I brought this out, when I was doing the uh, the Terraform Noir's big box unboxing, I had to like brush it off and a big plume of dust came up like I was researching spells in an ancient library or something so I thought wow it's really time to, to dive into this here we are <laughs> no that's not a good shot let's do it this way you know completely silent and that's the difference when you get when you get a box that so much love has gone into we're gonna say uh, box fartometer uh, that's gonna be zero uh, no noise hold on uh, there we go so, right off the top, look look how pretty. Look how, oh my gosh, look at this. So, compartments for all the different things, and they've embossed the shape of the thing that's supposed to go in each compartment on the plastic lid. That's really cool. I'm noticing right away that the lids don't um, snug up, like they don't have that little groove to like really chink, but they're also very, here I'll turn it to the side, they're very, very deep. So it's unlikely that they're just gonna be, you know, shifting all over the place. So maybe they don't need that little snuggy uppy bit. So there's tray number one, and then on here, and apologies if you've seen somebody else on another channel do all of this stuff. But again, we got in stuff that shows us where everything goes that's super cool I'll take this out and show you in a second um, but this is one of the things I really like about plastic over I've done a bunch of reboxings with wood inserts and I'm about to do some with foam core and uh, none of them can touch this kind of thing this scooped shape that you have that you know you got a bunch of components in there it's easy to, to dig them out with your fingers yeah that does look nice hey eh, Josh oh hey Michael's here No way to edit text here. Why, why did you make a typo? Oh, he's retracted his message. What did he say? Was it dirty? Did you say something dirty? Because <laughs> DM Explains will bring the band hammer down on you. Already I'm seeing that this... Uh, I'm going to put this on the close-up cam. And you know what? I'm going to move the close-up cam. I don't usually do this because it's ugly, but I can hardly ever reach the close-up cam. So let's start looking close up at some of these things. These are, if you know, if you know the game very well... These are the, uh, they go on your, your, your player board and they indicate sort of like a, there's two different scoring tracks essentially. So these used to be cardboard and they've made them not only plastic, but it's like, uh, uh, it's, there's relief to it. So uh, these things pop right out. I'm going to turn one if you can see. Look at that. That's, that's pretty slick. These are the easiest to lose pieces in the base game, hands down. They're just, and I think they give you extra in the base game to pop out of the cardboard because they're so tiny and so easy to... Yeah. <laughs> Fudge777 says, uh, Ryan hasn't burned the place down yet. Good to see. I'm working on it. Just give me a moment. Give... <laughs> We're getting there. And then this other box here, we'll go up here. Sorry, bag. So another thing they've done is they've taken more cardboard pieces. These are the... Uh, these are originally cardboard in the base game, and I'll put them on the close-up cam. Now they've made them thick, and you can hear that noise, right? Oops, I bumped the camera. These are now acrylic or plastic pieces, and that's uh, completely unnecessary, but super slick. Like, that's... Oh, 
<laughs> overproduction out the wazoo, but, but kind of cool. I mean, am I right? Ooh, and they're sharp. They feel much better to pick up than cardboard, I have to say. These are, you know, here's a cool thing about these. They're cheesy dust proof. If you're gonna be eating cheese snacks, ain't no way you're gonna transfer, transfer. And then they've done the same thing with the uh, little tokens that you get. So one of the gimmicks of this game is that it's, uh, you think, oh, it's a game about time travel. And this is the way that you time travel. Essentially, you kind of, an actor is complicated because you kind of have to n understand the story of the game to understand what's even going on. Essentially, there is a big cataclysm, like a big uh, apocalyptic event, and and the, the humankind is being beaten down into less, sort of four different factions, and they kind of all want control of the earth, but they're just like, they're they're cloistered or they're sequestered in their own little areas and because the rest of the, the planet is completely uninhabitable because of this crazy cataclysm. They don't even know what went on, but they do know that there's this uh, element uh, that they're calling neutronium, this purple stuff that's all over the place uh, suddenly. So they decide to take all the neutronium, and of course, as one does, build a gigantic monument in the center of town uh, with four faces on it uh, representing the four different factions. And when they do that, the big monument, the statue, opens up portals in time. It opens up rifts. And them from the future tells them from the now that, hey, guess what? Uh, there, there's a big meteor that hits the planet and it's made of neutronium and it sends all this neutronium all over the place and it opens up time rifts and that's what causes your big cataclysm. So in the future, this meteor is gonna hit. So you only have a certain amount of time uh, to get your, get your house in order. So all the different factions, uh, as one does, thinks, okay, uh, uh, we're gonna be the faction to control the Earth. So that's what you're doing, is you're the faction who wants to be in charge when the meteor hits and everything goes down. Uh, so it's a little bit dark and a little bit sort of like a jaded kind of story. Uh, but this is how you this is how you time travel. Really, time traveling, you're not time traveling. You're opening up a door to the future and you're asking yourself to borrow a cup of sugar. So you're saying, I don't have the resources to do the stuff I need right now, can you send something to me? And then you from the future send something through the wormhole to you, you use it, but that means that in the future, so later on in the game, uh, in a future round, you have to then send that thing back to yourself in the past or you create an anomaly. An anomaly essentially loses you points and stops your progress. So that's how it works. And of all the things going on in this game, I found the time travel bit the least interesting. I didn't think that mechanic, I didn't think it was super, super exciting. Like Rado told me when I asked him, he said, oh, it's just like, you're just like borrowing, getting a loan from yourself in the future, but it's just like getting a loan from the, the bank in the game and you gotta pay it back later. And I agree with him, it's not all that thrilling. But I think that there are other mechanics in this game that are more interesting but it's just harder to build a marketing story around them. Does that make sense? And one of them, sorry, I should have explained these a little bit further. So you put these on the timeline and they're the things that you're gonna borrow. So if you want one unit of gold from yourself, you put that on the little uh, timeline tile and you say, hey, future self, can I borrow a gold? And future self sends it to you. Um, one of the more interesting mechanics that I think is going in this game, I'm going to mention once we see the uh, the exosuit. So I'll save that uh, for for a sec. Hopefully I remember. So again, more of these things. There are the fancy metal cubes. <laughs> Josh Hunter says, unlike real life, where you get no active benefits for paying off loans. Uh, there was I follow U.S. politics very closely, and there's a certain famous figure in U.S. politics who's going to find out uh, the lack of benefit in not paying off his loans. Uh, check check the politics thread on Reddit if you want to find out more. Uh, these are these are the fancy schmancy metal unobtainium neutronium, and they feel really really good. One of the reasons I, I mentioned I didn't get the metal cubes for terraforming Mars was because already they're plastic cubes. They chipped and, and uh, flaked off at the corners, but these feel like they're painted a little bit differently. I'm gonna put them on the close-up camera. I think a different process went into making these because they don't, do you see what I mean? It's almost like the metal is like dyed. I'm sure it's painted, but it doesn't feel like there's a thick coat of paint on that. So I don't know if that's gonna be as prone to chipping, but eh, what do I know? We'll see, we'll see. I put all that to the side. It's nice that we'll be able to figure out where in these, but oh, interesting. Huh, I wonder why that does that. If you have this, you can you can let me know. Oh, Rado's here. Hey, Rado, I just mentioned you. 
Uh, Rado says, if you had that cable bound to the arm, I think it would look pretty cool, actually, with the curved shape and stark relief to the white. He's talking about this thing. Uh, Rado and I uh, make uh, uh, equipment recommendations to each other. So I, I, I told him to get the foot pedals that we both use, and he told me to get this thing to hold the... And he told me to get this camera, and he told me to get that camera, and basically he's bankrupted me with all the stuff. <laughs> stuff that I've heard. But look, Rado, I'm, I'm live streaming. Hey, it all worked out. It's all good. Uh, who else is saying what? Overall, it's looking pretty slick. I think so too, DM explains. Uh, uh, Fwidge777, where's the timey-wimey fun of calling it along? I know it's not Doctor Who timey-wimey. I know, you can't build a marketing story around saying, it's got an interesting worker replacement mechanic. Uh, Josh says, it's a, it's a loan, but it's a fun loan. It is a fun loan, and it's kind of really fun when you, can't, when you can't pay that loan back. And you're like, oh, I've disrupted the space-time continuum. Whatever you want to say. Uh, Forge says, bazing, I don't know why. Uh, Rado says, cut him some slack. Why? Well, yes, Michael says, because it's my very first time. Yes, what am I doing wrong? I don't even know, but I'm sure you'll all tell me later. There is a big, exciting piece of cardboard right on top, and then more of these amazingly designed. Can somebody tell me in the chat, do you guys know if Game Trays designed these things? Because I'm, I, I have big love for Game Trays. I think they do amazing work. They're the people who designed the trays for the Tricarian Collector's Edition, and I think they did a bang-up job, and these are looking like more of the same, except they don't have those telltale grippy divots, so I don't know if it's the same company. Anyway, um, this, I can tell from the shape of it, whoa, hello, this is where the uh, those time tiles go that I was just telling you about. Oh, and then more stuff. We're going to put this all back uh, later. So I'll put all these, I'm just mounting this huge pile of trays. And then another piece of card, I'm sure I'm going to get rid of these. If you haven't seen these things, they're they're pretty cool and weird, man. Like this, that's the weirdest one. I'm going to save the weirdest one until later. But over here... So these are the plastic minis that you get. And it's not necessarily, so this is, there's a plant faction. And it's not necessarily if you play the plant faction, you have to play with these mechs because, or, or sorry, exosuits. Because these bases come off and you can swap them around. So you can be the, uh, you can be the nautical faction and still play with the plant mechs if you really like those mechs and you want the, them to be blue, that's fine. Uh, no, nobody's gonna come to your house and kick the door down arrest you and then there's these sort of like mr driller looking things that look really really cool and i've seen these painted up i have a few uh people who join us on the discord server um one in particular luck bear and she paints her minis like nobody's business you should see her pictures they're just stunning uh this one's freaky though check this Whoa, that's one of the expansion, not one of the base game ones, but uh, the expansion exosuits. And oh my God, that is a nightmare feel. Somebody was mentioning Doctor Who earlier. Doesn't that remind you of like, I don't know, the head of Bo or something? Oh my gosh, he's got heads on his arms and his back. Ah, freaky. That is <laughs> that's freaky. Sci-fi. One of the things I, I, another thing I like about this game is that the vision, the artistic vision is so weird. It's so funky and out there. And it reminds me, I think I mentioned, of Zardoz. If you remember that, the big stone floating head and Sean Connery in a loincloth with a bullet belt. Weird stuff. More of these mechs. Oh, there's one that I haven't even seen, actually, because I haven't looked at uh, any expansion content. This is the one for the nautical uh, faction that I, I told you about. Their whole uh, section of humanity lives on a, on a big like battleship or big boat, so they kind of look like crustaceans. I think that one's my favorite one. I think they look really cool. And they remind me a bit of... Remember when Steven Spielberg remade War of the Worlds? They kind of remind me of his vision of the, of the aliens there. These ones are disturbing. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the, They're very... They remind me of... De woo! Depictions of, like, the beast with nine heads from Revelation or whatever. I probably got the head count wrong. But they're kind of like winged monkey lion things. A little bit Wizard of oz -y, but... Ooh, 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 nightmare fuel. The, the future is a scary place, folks. And, finally... I'm gonna run up, this is just gonna, I'm making a house of cards, it's gonna crash them down soon. I haven't seen these ones before. What are these ones all about? They're pretty though, I'm purple, man. If I get a chance to play purple on a board game. 
So Josh is saying, what do you say? Game trays quality is directly related to their partner company's communication skills. Compare the usefulness of Dice Throne to the huge waste in Super Fantasy Brawl. I have not, I've played Dice Throne once, but I can't comment, I'll take your word for it. So I, I assume that what you're trying to say is that like if a company um, doesn't get prototype pieces to game trays early enough or they're not, um, they don't communicate well what has to go in the box, game trays can't do a good job of actually making trays. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. Let me know in chat. But uh, I believe it. I believe it. Like I said, when I did the uh, Terraforming Mars big box last week, uh, it, it seemed clear to me that the very bottom tray that was just like an afterthought with a couple of like chambers and ah, just throw crap in there uh, was probably designed before they even knew what they needed to put in there. And that's why it was so loosey goosey, whatever. Uh, Josh says the inserts in the infinity box are really well designed. Yeah, they look it. Uh, though I wish the material was a little more durable. Yeah, they are that cheap, you know, flimsy uh, kind of stuff where you're worried it'll tear. I've had this this stuff. It's just vacuum formed plastic. I think they put it in a big sheet and stamp it and like that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's not. Um, but I mean, how? I don't know. You're gonna make all this stuff out of wood? I don't even know. If you 3D print something like this, it'll be a lot thicker and sturdier, but a heck of a lot more expensive. Believe you me. Uh, Dable says, Krang, Don Clemson says, Modoc. yes, is that, Modoc? is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? No, that's Krang, Modoc. I can't remember. Oh, he's from Justice League, right? He's a bad guy. Uh, Disney Gargoyles vibes, yeah, kind of, kind of thing. You know, they're bringing that back. Oh, they're making a board game of it, aren't they? Ravensburger, I thought, was making the Gargoyles board game. Uh, Grunts from Halo, I don't play Halo, I'll take your word for it. Uh, I'd need a co-signer to buy this game, Don says. <laughs> for real all of the instructions are in one big old <laughs> one big old bag i'm not going to pull that out but you can imagine look there's there's a little bit to get through uh if only somebody had a video that could teach you how to play this game let's, uh, let's check it out it's uh it's it's like all of these games you, you go and you invest the hours of reading the manual and then you go and invest, invest the hours of playing the game for the first time and you make all your mistakes. And at the end of maybe like a four hour session, you're all dehydrated and you think like, yeah, it wasn't that complicated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like once I got into it, I understood what was happening. Speaking of dehydrated, I'm going to take a little. <laughs> you know what? We're halfway through the box now. I think it's time for a snack. Uh, the snack today... Is this thing? What is this thing called? The Thunder Thunder Crunch, something like that. So the story behind today's snack is my friend Mare went. Oh, Black Thunder, Black Thunder Bar from Japan. My friend Mare went to Japan and brought uh, everybody back little chocolatey Halloweeny treats uh, from Japan. Um, now the problem with this is that Mare went to Japan probably six years ago, and this has been in my fridge ever since. So this today's snack is expired. Black Thunder chocolate from Japan. Uh, please feel free to comment in the chat what your snack is today. I hope you have your snacks ready. Um, I don't have a calorie count on this because maybe in Japan they're not required to put it on the packaging, but my calorie limit, I try to stick to 1900 a day. And usually when it's Halloween size like this, um, it's around maybe 100 and 120 if it's got nuts in it. This one does have nuts. Um, I don't know if it's edible. <laughs> I should have put up a new poll. Would you eat that? Would you eat the Black Thunder? Um, here we go. Bottoms up. Oh, I don't know if it's supposed to look like that. It was supposed to be all like dried out. I thought there were nuts in it. I was kind of, it's kind of like, you know, when you make a, a tray of brownies, and you got the crusty stuff all on the edges. It's like if that crusty stuff was inside the chocolate bar. Ah. Mm hmm. Which is pretty good, actually. I like it. It doesn't have the nuts I was expecting, though, but that's really unusual. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Verdict yes. Yes to the Black Thunder chocolate bar. Good snack. You can get rid of that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What's Ekin eating? Ekin's eating uh, pita chips. That's good. I mean, if you're watching calories, pita chips, pita chips are a good choice. Um, Josh says he would not have eaten it if he knew it was expired. This is why you watch, because I'm doing the things that you don't dare to do. Eating expired snacks. 
opening a game he has no idea about. All right. <laughs> Fudge says, I don't want anything named Black Thunder in my mouth. Uh, fair dinkum. That's cool. Uh, uh, jo oh, Josh, the, more conversation about game trays. Uh, game trays, uh, people charge a premium, though. I agree that GT would be, game trays would be nicer, but I'm cool with them saving the 30 bucks. Why? Is that because if I scrolled up, maybe, maybe game trays didn't do this one? I don't know. I'm missing a little bit in chat. That's fine. Back to it. Woohoo! Um, boards, boards and cards. I'm worried now that I've got Black Thunder all over my fingers and I'm going to transfer it to these boards. So um, maybe I leave them in shrink. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, the, woo, uh, the, oh, that's a whole, wow. That's a whole, I can't even get it out. There's a whole pack of stuff. Come on now. Oh, uh, this is the big main board. I'm not going to take that out, but I will open, oh, gee whiz. There's new stuff going on in here. I've never seen these these guys before these are likely expansion things uh so there's so much going on it's i wouldn't say it's kitchen sink mechanic wise but they got to make sure like oh we got to have buildings and oh it's got to be it's got to be asymmetric and we got to make sure that everyone has a leader and all the leaders have powers and and you got to be able to pick a faction and all the factions have something you know slightly different going on too so i think they all have an advantage and towards the end of the game after the meteor hits you have to evacuate people from the city and this is one where well, let's get the rules gremlin up here because this was uh, uh where's the rules gremlin hello rules gremlin rules gremlin is not coming yeah, oh, there he is. Uh, this is one of the things that confuses people the most because they think there's this whole evacuation thing going on in the game and they think like my whole goal, and it sort of sets it up as an end game goal on your faction board. My whole goal is to evacuate people from the capital and then when I, when I do that, I win, right? That's not the case at all. Evacuating people uh, from the capital is just another way to get points. It's kind of, you know, point salad and if you want more points, then you'll 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 accomplish that so the communication of how that that evacuation thing worked I, I don't think it was super duper successful but i got it i got it eventually it's just teaching people you know you have them down at the table and you have to say listen evacuation is not the be all and end all so this guy brand new to me eldrin castian talia zaida i think we've seen her halani zaida Halani again, two different versions of Halani. What is the difference between the two different versions of Halani? So this is one of the two leaders you can pick from based on which faction you get. And on the back, oh, well, I was like, let's see what the power is. I don't even know. I'm not too sure why I would have two Halanis. Let me know in comments if you know. Uh, so this is what you know, the aesthetic looks like. Everyone looks like a, just a little bit weird kind of creepy a little bit queen street west toronto in the mid 90s if you know what i'm saying it's just a little bit a little bit funk a little bit of funk going on and that's that's like tricarian too if you know tricarian very well it's uh it's a little unsettling magoria is not a super happy place and they kind of set it up a little bit like uh what was that movie i always make fun of not the illusionist the other one the prestige where there's there's some there's some dark subversive element to the magic going on and everybody's a little bit like a little bit off-putting i think is is also what's going on in this game big old pile of more boards some of these are going to be base game because i recognize them and some of them are not when i mentioned the, the uh, evacuation requirement here that's what's down here that little sort of volcano -y exploding icon means evacuation so these are the different faction boards your leader goes on there different factions get different resources off the top of the game you've you've seen that kind of thing before but it's like if it exists in board games and acronym is like we gotta have it we gotta put it in there mm-hmm i've got black thunder stuck in my teeth and probably will for years mm-hmm what else oh ho, ho. come out please i might need to apply some knife action to this just a little pin prick. Mm -hmm. People you'd see on Speaker's Corner, says Side the Wire. That, that's what I'm talking about, Queen Street West. If you don't know Speaker's Corner, Side the Wire brings up a good point. Uh, Canadians, we know it very well if we were of a certain age. 
It was cool, man. Our answer to M to MTV was a channel called Much Music, and Much Music had this big historic building rented out in the center of town, uh, in the center of all the action. And what they did was on a corner of the building, they built this little video booth, and you could go in and pop in. It was probably a, a Looney or a Toonie. It might have existed before Loonies existed, actually. And you get X number of minutes just to just to spout off, which, and you're like, well, isn't that the internet? Yeah, but this was before the internet. So you could do this on Speaker's Corner, and then their editors would take all the best stuff that had accumulated throughout the week, and they would they would air it in an episode. And so you just sit down. So it was kind of like YouTube before YouTube. And it was, it was awesome. I loved it. And interestingly, if you've ever heard of a little band called the Bare Naked Ladies, that was one of the places they got their start. They would come in and uh, Cregan would have like his big bass and they'd be like, you know, jamming out and play these tunes on Speaker's Corner. And that was one of their earliest marketing vehicles and they developed a yeah, huge fan base from that. Super cool stuff. Little little Kanakistan. Canada Day was yesterday, so we got to get some Canadian, Canadian history in, in educational content in this stream. Uh, more little boards and cards, which might mean more to you if you know the game very, very well, are, are, are excited about what to expect in the expansion. This is a score sheet. This is the board that goes on top, and when it turns into, so it starts like this, and then when it turns into scary danger time, it's time to evacuate people to earn extra points. Blah! Scary danger evacuation. And then all kinds of stuff that's new to me. I haven't seen any of this stuff. This is all boards for the extra modules. Those pieces that we're going to open up in the bag shortly go in here. Those canisters, I'm sure. Whew. So much. So much. So many icons. It's one of those ones where there's not a lot of language on the board. You have to learn what all the different icons mean and sort of, you know, read the game like that. There's another... I mentioned that the uh, tug resources, the tungsten, uranium, and gold are in plastic. So here's our bag of plastic resources, which we can safely throw in the garbage because we got better stuff. And little standees, so little leader markers go in these standees. And dice, we got our rolled dice, and they're all custom dice, and they're recessed, and they're cool. They look good, but there's extra ones. Wow, haven't seen those before. Cool, I mean, how excited am I to delve into all of that and spend the, the hours of intense study that it's going to take. Is the Speaker's Corner for BNL? Yeah, like I said, which uh, Speaker's Corner is where BNL, BNL got their. I mean, they were a band obviously before that, but that's. I think they picked up a lot of fans doing Speaker's Corner. Uh, Calm, I think, is recommending. Yeah, Calm's recommending an acronym. So I was going to say, one of the things that I thought was really interesting about an acronym, the loan thing, uh, not super compelling, but you have these exosuits, okay? And you have your board and you have. Uh, spots on your board to place the exosuits and you you also have the little workers that go inside the exosuits so on your turn before anybody's placing anything anywhere you put the exosuits down on your board and that's sort of like a pledge it's like I am going to take X many actions this round and it's a little bit kind of like Tricarian if you know Tricarian where um, you're pledging with your location cards to send workers to the different locations around the board. Now you can send them there in any order, but you don't know who's going to arrive there first and get the better spots. So in this, it's another twist on worker placement. You're pledging to send out a certain number of workers. Location doesn't matter, but it's the number of workers you're pledging to send out. And then, like Tricarian, you don't know if by the time you go to send a worker out, uh, whether you're going to get the good spot or whether you're going to send the right worker to get the, the cool thing or if you're going to have to go to what I call Loser Alley. All these worker placement games always have an area called Loser Alley. I call it Loser Alley, where it's like if you can't do anything else, that's the default. That's the backup, and that's where you send your worker. These are cards. Neurostimulation. Byproduct converter. This is all nerd stuff. What? You guys, is this a nerd game? Uh, <laughs> do you think? Fracture device capacitor. <laughs> Flux scrubber. <laughs> Compound warp, rift power transmitter, workforce augmentation. Total, total geekery. If you're a geek, and I know you probably are, this game is, is for you. And then another stack of possibly about 50,000 more cards um, doing things. Again, for expansion modules that I don't recognize. But cool stuff like Pocket Universe and Hive Mind. I like the art. The art's neat. It's original. Um, 
like I say, it's hard. A lot of these games, you look at it and you're like, oh, well, that's that's Back to the Future. You look at this, you're like, oh, that's Star Trek. But this one, it's hard hard to put a finger on it, isn't it? It doesn't look like a lot of other things. Like I say, Zardoz maybe. But like, who knows Zardoz? I don't know. Krull? You know the the hit movie Krull that was such a blast to watch in 1983? These are cards that just determine which resources go out in a certain spot on the board. So they're not going to be too exciting. But it's one of the ways that the game uh, keeps keeps you on your toes, keeps fresh and exciting, and then whoever gets to that spot first gets certain resources. <laughs> What is uh, VX Junkies? Is that like Visual uh, Visual Effects Junkies uh, subreddit? I guess so. Happy belated candidate. Thank you so much, Fudge. We spent it having a little chicken wing barbecue in the backyard. It was very nice. Things are just opening up. I think uh, almost everybody in the house has their second uh, dose of the vaccine, except the kids. We're going to get them vaccinated for the second time later on in the month. And then... then the, like Rodney Dangerfield says at the end of Caddyshack, we're all going to get laid. <laughs> it's just going to be this is an orgy of, not a figurative orgy of everybody getting together and playing games and finally see, hugging. Oh, won't that be glorious and grand? More cards, more stuff I don't recognize or understand. These kind of look like goal cards, don't they? Whoa. Neat. Do you guys, are you guys snobs uh, when it comes to card size? Or you just, you hate like little cards? They've they got to be full format cards or like tabloid cards or, or or hang them you don't want them no no tell me tell me uh, to do then down here where's the cat fudge dungeon pets is also similar you commit workers before you know anything yeah that's a good point Ekin. we've been playing dungeon pets for weeks now on board game uh, arena if you would like to play with us hit the discord server why do I hit these buttons and it never happens? Come on now. I, I worked I worked hard to make this work. Discord server. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and we have a channel in there called Game Scheduling. So if you want to play any games, usually on Board Game Arena, sometimes we'll do stuff on Tabletop Simulator. We played an epic game of uh, Tricarian one time. I think it took us six hours <laughs> on Tabletop Simulator. So like one time we did that. Uh, more board, If I'm skipping past things that you want to see... Uh, let me know. But this is a whole pile of cardboard and I uh, somebody gave me the heads up on Facebook that you don't actually have to punch all of this stuff out because some of this is replaced by the the, the nicer plastic ones. Some stuff isn't. So these are all going to be, uh, they don't look like it. There's another complaint I, ha I sort of have about the game is you're, you're constructing buildings and for a game that, that wants you to look at symbols and kind of recognize what's going on, because it's so wackadoo and out there and just sci-fi weirdness, just original stuff, it's hard to recognize things for what they are. So I'll show you when we get down to, like this is time. <laughs> you know, obviously it's time. How could you look at that and not know? But this right here is a building. And that's a building, you know, it's just this rectangular tile and they don't, they don't look anything like buildings. So it's hard, especially when you're teaching the game to say to people, oh, you see this rectangular thing, that's a building. I don't know. If I designed the games, uh, a whole other stack of a massive stack of cardboard is what we find in the very, very bottom of the box. Oh, and more boards. Holy cow. These are the... Are these the player boards? No, they're not. They're like module boards. This is what the player boards look like. So as I mentioned, these are the areas where you can commit your mechs and you say like, oh, I want I want to go in three places. So you know, mech, mech, mech. All of your awake workers line up here. And this is another mechanic that I liked in this game that I thought was, I've seen it, I've seen it elsewhere, but I thought it was well integrated here. Everybody's awake and alert and fresh here, and everybody's asleep here. Once you use a worker, they go from the awake column into the asleep column, and there's different kinds of workers, uh, three different kinds of workers with uh, one like super worker who can do the, he's like wild. And you have to put awake workers in your mechs, and after you use them, they go to the tired column, but you can get a resource called water, if you heard of it, uh, that you can use to wake your people up and make them awake again so you can put them back in mechs. So... There's that whole thing to juggle. And then it does something like, I just was playing the expansion to 
Merchants and Marauders, where you have a morale tracker, and the happier your crew is, the more benefits you get, and the angrier they are at you, the more you kind of suffer penalties. So that's kind of like, remember I told you those little tiny things that are easy to lose? You know what? I... I've lost them, I don't know where they are, but <laughs> that's where uh, one of the places where this marker goes. So here, like the the more uh, water you pay and go up, the more points and stuff you get, and the less water you pay, uh, you lose points, and then when you get all the way down here, one of your workers dies. So, so and the whole water thing is kind of like, you're giving them water to be like, get out of bed it's time for another it's time to face the future you can't but you can there's also a, a thing where you can like i forget how you do it but you force you force your workers out of bed and you, you're gonna you're gonna take a worker placement spot whether you like it or not damn it uh, and then you suffer more uh, consequences and penalties for doing that it's, it's neat that's a neat system over here on the right side and this is what the whole how to play video is for so i'm gonna go over everything but this is where you place those rectangular buildings i mentioned over here and this is where you get points for traveling in time so that's neat too when a game has a mechanic I feel bad for games that have mechanics where you kind of like don't have to participate in order in order to win what game was somebody talking about the other day where it's like I don't know say if it was a wingspan this is not true of wingspan but it would be like you don't actually have to collect birds to win at wingspan you'd be like what isn't that like the whole game so there's another game where you don't actually have to do this oh it was viticulture you don't actually have to make wine to win at viticulture like is that in the spirit of the game was that a good idea so i, I like a, i like a game where it's like you know if you participate in time travel which is what we're doing here you get points yes i don't i don't think i'm going to tackle this quite yet usually when i do these unboxings i go all the way through the box and then i spend the next x hours popping everything out and throwing it in all the different compartments and chambers. And then I'll take that segment because I have the, the power of editing and I'll speed it up in a time lapse and you don't have to sit here forever. I'll be honest, I don't have an end game here. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to do at this point, but why don't we start with the simple stuff and I'll show you those extra things that Mind Clash sent me because I'm sure you're interested in seeing those. Mm hmm if I can find them, I don't know. Let's take, Oh my lord, ah, here they are. Yeah, like somebody mentioned, these plastic trays are a little bit, I, I know, I wouldn't feel super comfortable stacking them like that too much. There's a certain structural way they have to go in the box, and if you disobey those rules, then you're in for some, some busted trays. All right, let's finally, at long last, I've just been, man, this has been a reward to myself because I've been staring at these components for a good long time, for months and months, thinking like, one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna unbox an Acrity Infinity box, and oh, won't that be a glorious day? Let me look at some questions here. Uh, uh, the Junkies is a joke role-playing subreddit where people pretend to be ultra advanced scientists and physicists. That sounds hilarious. <laughs> Calm says any any card size as long as it's functional. It doesn't mind if it's some are little, some are some are big. Team uh, uh, explains says viticulture makes me crazy. I'm with you. Uh, Sanjuar, I totally get annoyed at the different card sizes since I sleeve cards. I understand what you're saying. I'm going on a special voyage to a store called 401 Games tomorrow, which is one of the best board game stores in Canada. Uh, it's in the heart of downtown Toronto, and I used to live down the street from it. Uh, and I'm gonna buy cards for Arnak. Arnak's really annoying because the cards that they always sell me at 401 Games are, I think, one or two millimeters too narrow for the Arnak cards. Or, put a different way, CGE made their cards one millimeter too wide to fit standard cards. So I have to go hunt down a special card size. So hopefully, hopefully they have those. These are, these feel really nice. Of course, these, these are gonna feel nicer if you like touching plastic, then cardboard, they're gonna get less dirty, less quickly, they're gonna be easier to clean. I like them, they feel good. The very first time I ever learned about quality components and the difference they can make in a game is when I bought the component upgrade pack for Alien Frontiers. I think I mentioned this when I unboxed Terraforming Mars. Now these little acrylic domes instead of the little painted wooden ones, and they just looked so cool. I should put these on close-up, shouldn't I? <laughs> they just look so cool. 
And these things, look at these canisters. They're two colors, so there's kind of like a transparent, purpley, resiny thing inside. I'm gonna to try to turn it and you can see in the light, like look at that there. Look how cool that is. Look how cool that is, you guys. Those are awesome. Those, those are cool. Um, oh, we should find out, wow, which tray they go in. Ah, oh, um, and we can do that very easily because they're all clearly marked. Ah, oh, amazing, I don't have to look at, oh, you know what? You know what's missing? It's in here somewhere, but I haven't seen it yet. Scream in the chat if you saw it fly by and I didn't notice it. There's a key somewhere that depicts where everything goes. There's, I, I have, many people have told me there's an exploded view that helps you put all this stuff back together that we didn't have for terraforming, terraforming Mars or, or Tricarian or anything. Let me know if you saw that or if you, know, if you opened this yourself, if you want to copy where it is. Uh, yeah, so nice is calm. I agree. Don says it was viticulture. Yes, we were talking about viticulture was the game where you could not make wine and still win. Um, calm says the super projects go with the buildings. The super projects are the super projects. I'm going to go out on a limb and say are these. Did I get that right? Come on, focus, 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 focus. It's not, he, he does not want to focus. We'll do it this way. This is what a super project looks like. It's horizontally printed instead of vertically printed. That's how you know it's a super project. And it's a special thing that you can build. And it's a bit of a race because there's only some of them available along the timeline. And if you, if the game progresses, you can only make, you can only build the super project that is above the current timeline. But if you open a wormhole and travel back in time, you can create a super project that was available in the past. So that's another way they work the time travel thing in there. Uh, Calm says, question, do you consider yourself a Mind Clash fan now? Is you back Castaway Chronicles? Is Castaway Chronicles Perseverance? I have played Anachrony once and Tricarian a bunch. Uh, let me tell you what I think about Mind Clash so far. First of all, uh, when I work with publishers uh, and I make these how to play videos, when I before I had any inroads with publishers or anything, what I'd be doing is taking a board game down from my own collection. I paid my own money for the game, and to to I, I do a lot of stuff. If you see my videos, where graphics fly in in front of the board and stuff, and to get those graphics, I would just take my components, throw them on my scanner, and then laboriously cut them out in Photoshop and and put them in the game that way. And that's fine, but what's missing is that the you can sort of see the, the dot offset. You can see the three color process printing going on in cards and stuff when you do it that way. And it doesn't, it doesn't look super good. It's not high res graphics. What I prefer to do, and now as publishers are commissioning me to do uh, Kickstarter preview videos, is I'll say, well, one of the requirements I have is that you send me your high res graphics so that I don't have to scan anything or cut anything. And I can just have all those assets and animate them, bring them on the screen because it saves me a lot of time and it looks a lot better. The video is going to look great. Um, so the Kickstarter preview people who are paying me uh, to make those videos, no problem. Of course, no problem. However, I've recently been hitting up other publishers and I've said, hey, I've got X board game, which I've owned for years. I'd like to make a how to play of it, but it would be really uh, better for me if you were, if you had high res graphics, you can send them to me and I can use in the video. And most of them say no right off the bat. And I understand why they say no, I get it. Because if you've been following board game news this week, uh, Asmodee is suing a, I think is teaming up with Amazon, maybe or or not, is suing a, uh, a counterfeiter of board games. Because a lot of people have been ordering board games on Amazon, they get them home, the cards are kind of dull, the box is weird and janky, it doesn't have a back on it, it is printed white, and they're like, I don't think this is the real, board game. It's because some companies are counterfeiting. And so it's been going on for quite a while. And now finally Asmodee, who has the big guns and the lawyer money, is taking action uh, against it. So I can understand why they say no, they don't want their assets out in the wild to to print. That's the first part of that story. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think that they think I'm going to go counterfeit their game, but just the more instances you have of your printable artwork out there, um, the more chance you have of it getting pirated. So with a number of these publishers, I've come back to them and I've said, first of all, <laughs> I'm not here to pirate your game. All I want to do is make a board game video of it. Uh, and then I 
Uh, my next tactic is to drop big publishing names of other publishers who have given me their assets. So I'll say, you know, uh, Catan Studio had no problem sending me their assets, right? Well, Catan actually was a little bit nervous about sending me their assets. That was a little bit of a lie. But I sort of, you know, I named her. It's kind of like when we had a guy going around the neighborhood this week who was selling a uh, uh, like critter removal services and he said to my wife Cheryl he said well I was talking to your neighbor John and your other neighbor Beth and they both signed up with me so it's it's a tech it's a tactic anyway I'm not above using petty tactics to convince people to do things for me uh, and then I I would say I'm only looking for certain certain like I'm only looking for your cards so just give me high-res assets of your cards you keep your boards you keep your player guides you keep your logo and your box art and all this all this stuff uh, and with only like your deck I can't I can't copy I can't counterfeit your game I don't have enough stuff to counterfeit your game so there's uh, there's no way I can possibly do what you're nervous I'll, I'll do with your stuff is another thing I tell them and what's the the last case I make I make another very good point with them and I can't remember what, oh, I also mentioned casually that, you know, these, these videos I make take 40 hours for me to produce and when they're commissioned from, by people, they cost X dollars. And so I say, you know, and I'm kind of doing this for, for free and it's kind of like a marketing vehicle for you. So can my pony up? Oh, and that's the other thing with, with, uh, with, with, uh, splatter. Actually, no, I didn't say this to splatter. I was tempted to, but I thought that they would take it as an insult and it would have been, but I kind of told splatter like, Food Chain Manga wouldn't be hard to pirate whether you give me your artwork or not. Like, there's not a whole lot going on. I could trace all these graphics in the course of an afternoon and pirate your game if I wanted to, and I don't want to, so I don't. Uh, anyway, with most of these publishers that I've gone back to with all these points, they've kind of said, like, okay, you convinced me, and uh, and I tell them they can make a like a password protected repo uh, that only they can just give me access to it. I assure them that I'll destroy the assets once I'm done with them, which is true because I don't have enough hard drive space to keep them hanging around. So all these points, uh, in the end, what happens is they say yes and they give me their assets. So I've got some cool stuff coming up. Black Angel, the Pearl Games people, they said yes and they gave me their assets, which is really exciting. Uh, who else said yes to me? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've had a few publishers say like, yeah, okay, we'll play ball. Here's our assets. Off you go to the races. Cool. Let me check chat. What's going on? Uh, to do Reboxing. Yeah, Josh says reboxing his uh, Infinity Box took 90 minutes. I don't know if we all want to sit here for 90 minutes, do we? I don't know if that would be compelling content. Uh, <laughs> TV chefs at this point will always show something they prepared earlier. Yeah, I agree, Michael. Yeah, I agree. Maybe we'll throw it in a, just a couple things in a, in a couple boxes, but I don't know if sifting through all the boards is going to be that compelling. Uh, uh, oh, and I was going to say to the question about whether I'm a Mind Clash fan, here's one thing that I really like that Mind Clash does. So they'll put out the Kickstarter and it'll be like bells and pay more money and you get bells and whistles and pay more money and you get bells and metal whistles, da da da. And you can go all in or you can just buy the one thing, but there's never a worry that if you're not in, you won't be able to get the stuff. You're gonna pay a lot more for it, but they always release the stuff at, at retail or through their, their store, which I really, really appreciate because I have had enough of games that board game publishers play. I had this problem with Serious Pulp when they did uh, Seventh Continent, and they said, this will never be available at retail. And then they released it a version of it at retail. It's like, ah, damn you, that's the whole reason I backed. And then uh, somebody else did, oh yeah, plan, was it Plan B Games who had, uh, if I'm getting their name wrong, forgive me, but when they did um, Century Spice Road and then they did the Gollum version, which I much preferred, and then the whole deal with Century Spice Road was there were gonna be two other games, it was gonna be a trilogy. And I thought, well, I'm gonna wait because I'd really like the Gollum version of all three of these. I, I think it looks cooler. And they said, we will, we're not going to do Gollum versions of these other games and then they released them and people bought them but I was skeptical I'm learning in my old age and I decided not to buy them and then of course eventually due to popular demand or or due to we were lying or whatever happened they said okay here here are the Gollum versions it's like oh so I don't know but you you find the same pattern the the other games are Cerebria and and Perseverance, and the new one that they announced with uh, Turchi involved, is, he's the co-designer, is Voidfall, which is going to be a 4X sci-fi space combat stuff game, and I'm pretty excited about the sound of that. Interestingly though, I follow a game designer, and I wish I could recall his name, on, on TikTok, and he was saying that he was in the 
design competition or he knew about the design competition for CG, uh, not CG, Alderac. Alderac hosts this design competition every year and they you know, have to reject a bunch of concepts. And, and one of the reasons they rejected stuff is they say if too many people come in with the same uh, concept, we kind of go, nah. So he said that they said that the two concepts they saw a whole lot were gem upgrade games, of uh, which Century Spice Road is one. So it seems like people are trying to ride that Century coattail. And the other one, interestingly, was 4X Space Games. So I thought that was that was interesting that Mind Clash is doing a 4X Space Game and Alderac's like, no more 4X Space Games, there's too many of them. So I don't know, keep your eyes on that. Perseverance, I'll ask you guys what you think of Perseverance. I wasn't convinced, and I asked Mind Clash about, about it, and I was honest with them, and I, I thought, the episodic thing to me is weird. So Perseverance is like Lost meets Jurassic Park. The people are on a big cruise ship, I think, and they they shipwreck on the shore of this island that has dinosaurs, and then they have to like either harness or live with or train the dinosaurs. And the first episode is them setting up camp, and it's a whole board game unto itself. And then there's a second episode where they're going deeper into the island and doing other stuff. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it seemed weird because it's like is if we're making progress, if you've played the second one, why would you ever? go back in time in the story and play the, the first one where they're setting up camp. It seemed like a really unique concept to me, but weird. Is that weird? I don't know. Tell me in, tell me in chat. Uh, we're talking about Century Golem. Uh, publishers should release media kits like many video game companies do. You're absolutely right, Side Noir. And you know who, one of the best people who does that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> is CGE, they're fantastic. One of the things I need all the time is the the game's word mark, like the, the logo, the title, isolated with no background because I use it on my thumbnails and, and various other places. And so many of these companies, I have to like write them and request it and they don't, sometimes they get back to me, sometimes they don't, sometimes they get back after a week and usually I'm like, no, it's Friday, I gotta put a video on now. Oh, I just started it five minutes ago. Uh, but, um, CG is great because you can just go to their website and you click on the press page and it's like, boom, it's a full page of all their game word marks uh, isolated uh, on transparent backgrounds. And you can just right click, boom, and I got it. So I think more companies need to do that. They're getting better. They're getting better. They have press kit pages. Uh, you didn't finish the story. Um, what was Mind Clash's take on assets? Oh, what was Mind Clash's take on assets? Sorry for, for I go off the, off the deep end. Mind Clash said, yes, absolutely. <laughs> they said, yes, please have all of our assets. Please, if you're gonna make a video, we like your videos, we like what you did, what you're carrying, go, go, go. And so I went, 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 and I made a cool, I think cool, uh, how to play video of Anachrony. Uh, so yeah, great great on them for, for I, I can't stop touching these. These are really, <laughs> these are compelling, I like them. I really like the feel of them. So yeah, no, Mind Clash has been great to work with so far. I've been. Uh, and you know, it doesn't help that they gave me all this, uh, this stuff's cool. And they're like, yeah, we'll get you, do you want Cerebria? I'm like, no, hold on. That's, it's a lot. Like an, I knew Anachrony was already a lot. And then they said, well, send you Perseverance too. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I felt really bad because you've seen how long it, it took me to unbox this thing. So I didn't want, uh, uh, Eagle Griffin Games did the same thing. They were very generous and they sent me a whole pile of games and I can see them right here. They're sitting in my, in my unwrapped stack of, you know, shrink wrap games and I feel really bad. I say, thank you very much and I'll get to them, but I, I don't want to annoy any of these companies by, by, with how long it takes me to get to stuff. Um, Don says, I was supposed to purchase uh, the copy of Food Chain Magnet for four Canuck bucks. Is this the right channel? Uh, uh, yes, uh, absolutely, Don. Uh, give me your email address and please uh, uh, Venmo me 50. I'm not going to keep the 50, but uh, with the 50 in escrow, I can send you the $4 copy of Food Chain Magnet. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, my friend is burned by Century Golem thing. Uh, he took it personally and now refuses to buy any more games from Plan B. That can happen, right? If you have enough bad run-ins with publishers, you can just want to boycott them. There's a certain publisher that I've mentioned numerous times on this channel, uh, and it's like once bitten, twice shy, except more, more like four times bitten by these guys and their silly practices. And if you watch the channel, you know who I'm talking about. And aside from the one game series that I'm in deep with them on, I would never buy anything else from them ever, ever again. Uh, what's his plan C? Uh, in episode two of Perseverance, it's a back and forth political dominance thing. Yeah, so it sounds like a different 
flavor. I think first episode sounds a bit more like it's survival, and then the second one's uh, more like, I don't know, is it like Turmoil? I haven't played Terraforming Mars Turmoil, where there's a parliamentary system. Um, Bar Canadian is always doing this hmm, 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 singing routine while drinking. I'm just trying to keep it entertaining for you, Michael. I know watching some guy drink is not exciting, but when you hear him hum while drinking, well, now I've got your attention. Uh, the canisters are fire. They sure are. Uh, EG Games, our next live stream. Yeah, so I put out a vote to um, my high rolling backers uh, with all these uh, Eagle Griffin games, and I said, which one do you want me to unbox? And I'm not going to reveal the result of the vote because I'd like you to watch that stream as well, but I will very shortly be showing you all of the Eagle Griffin stuff. Uh, but this is Mind Clash's moment. Let's not take let's not take the focus away from Mind Clash and their accomplishments here. Uh, we were just going to take one of these trays and throw a couple of things in there. Do 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 do. Although I guess when you have the the lid off, I don't know if it would have been better to emboss the bottom with this with the symbol that indicating what you need to put in there. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Um, but some of these are, are cardboard punchy things I can already see. So maybe this isn't the best one to start with. Let me try. Let me try something else here. Nope. Nope. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, this is where it all comes crashing down. This was the moment we were waiting for, folks. The complete unraveling of the live stream. Hope technically it's going well so far. Hopefully it's the stream has kept up. Yeah, okay, we'll do this one. <laughs> Foot. Fudge triple seven. How did you send me? I was joking about the money. How did you send me money? I didn't. I honestly did not even know that that was a thing you could do. Please call your credit card company and thank you if you did actually send me three bucks. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you still bought the collector's edition, huh, Ryan? Uh, about the game that I said I would not deal with the, the publisher anymore. I bought I bought the collector's edition and then I bought the expansion and then I bought the second expansion and then I bought the third and fourth expansions and then I bought the wooden tree and I bought the metal coins and then I bought the uh, the hug a badger experience that they have where they send a badger to your house. No. I went, uh, I went nuts on that because I really, 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 really liked that game. So it, it hurt when, when what happened happened with those guys. And I realized that they don't like their customers all that much is what it seemed like. I have a question. Maybe you can sort it out for me if you've seen this product before. One of the... Da -da -da. So one of the symbols looks like uh, these things that you put on the timeline, except one of the things I really like when they make collector's editions and stuff, don't you like it when everybody gets a box and their box has all their pieces in it with their color? That's what Chikarian did and it was it was gorgeous. I just, I, I, I love that. But are they suggesting like absolute heretics that I put all of the different colors of these things in here? And will they even fit? Is that, a th is that what they want me to do? You monsters? I don't know, please, please tell me in chat. I'm a little upset by that. Oh, whoa, what happens when you need to burp or fart on a live stream? Do you know, do you watch enough live streamers? What do they do? Do they sneak off? Do they play loud music? Well, they, anyway, I get a bit peptic sometimes because I talk too much. <laughs> That's a sad, Oh, that's a super chat, Ryan, DM explains. I don't know what a super chat is, but it seems pretty super because it's got a dollar sign next to it. Uh, I never used the super chat thing, and I thought you were worth trying it out. Well, thank you for trying it out on me, Fudge Triple Sub. You know what? I don't know if it quite worked, though. I think you need to try it out six or seven more times. We just got to make sure that it worked. It's just a dollar sign next to the emoji button underneath where you... Well, th yes, we should look at this. Tell me more. It's a dollar sign, you say, and you click it. I don't know if it works for everybody, though. I think... We should all collectively click that button and and, and <laughs> spend money to see. <laughs> Super chat works for everybody. Uh, Side the wire says yes. I love it when games have player trays like Dice Throne. Again with the Dice Throne, people are nuts about this game. I went to my friend Don's house, not Don, though Don, well, we were playing Overwatch last night, weren't we, Don? It was super fun. Doc's house, and he had Dice Throne, and it was a three-player game, and I think what happened was we were playing it before they came out with some sort of rule change, because we sat down, we all had our characters, it's a game where everybody gets a character, I'm an elf, you're a fighter, this guy's a wizard, and we were rolling dice in order to defeat each other, but those two guys, Jason and Doc, jerks that they were, 
ganged up on me and every single time they had damage to deal out they were like no throw it to the punching bag and so i just sat there just getting knocked around the entire time and there's player elimination which you know i don't really enjoy in games and they booted me right right out of dice throne however michael hopefully you can chime in loves dice throne says it's incredible and i don't know what i'm missing i don't know if there was a rule change that says that ganging up when you're when you're th playing three player is not a thing but maybe you can tell me hmm yeah fudge where is that guide that tells me what goes where that would be that would be super helpful. You know what? I'm gonna search for it. And while I search for that guide, I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain you a little bit more. I have a puzzle for you. I have a, a Rebus puzzle that I'm gonna throw up, and it's gonna describe a board game. So you might hear some thumpy bumpy in the background as I search desperately for this guide. But uh, there's no prize attached to this. This is just for your enjoyment. So see if you can figure out which board game title this Rebus is referring to. Mm -hmm. I know there's like a 45 second delay on the audio and you're all, you're all <laughs> Google reverse image searching it. Oh, Dean Explains. Thank you so much. Super Chat. Super Chat works for Dean Explains. Remember, if you're worried about Super Chat not working for you, by all means, click that button and find out. <laughs> hey, Dave's here. Dave, can we, can we tell everybody about the, the nickname I came up for you? I don't know. <laughs> My friend Dave, I came up with a nickname for it. I'll put the Rebus back up in just a second. Came up with a nickname for it. I, I, I don't know if he wants me to share it though, but you're going to be seeing Dave on some live streams with me shortly. He just lives 40 minutes up the road and uh, has been a friend of mine since high school. And I think you'll qu quite enjoy what Dave has to bring to the literal table. Wait, the Rebus. Back to the Rebus. There's the Rebus. Oh, Fudge! Fudge gets it. It is indeed Crystal Palace. Very well done. Let's find out why it's Crystal Palace. So there's Chris Pratt, who you know from Marvel. That's Mikhail Tal. Uh, he's the uh, eighth chess, eighth chess world chess championship champion. Um, so yeah, that that's that guy. And he's interesting because he has what is it called aerodactyly? He's got an uh, 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 interesting thing going on with his hand. It's a congenital defect. And apparently, I was looking him up. He he was a not only a chess player, didn't hamper him at all, but he also played piano with that hand too. That's kind of neat. And then if you ever watched Arthur, that's Arthur's pup pal. And uh, again, Marvel Universe, if you know, you know, that's America's ass. Uh, Chris Tell pal ass. I don't know. Was that cool? Should we do more of that? I only have the, I only have the one for this live stream, but hopefully. And guess what? I found, I found what we're looking for. Look at this. It's the tray manual. It's entire, I thought it was just going to be a, like an exploded sheet. It's a holy crap. Oh, mama. This, oh, man. oh, my God. Of course, this needs to be a book. Oh, zoinks. Don, thank you so much. Super Chat. I like Super Chat. You know what? I didn't know really much about it, but I, I'm pro Super Chat right now. Uh-oh, uh the soccer smack talk has started in the, uh, in the chat. Is Crystal Palace a soccer team, footy team? I don't even know. Uh, what I don't know about sports, you could fit in an entire... Infinity Box Train Manual, <laughs> which is a lot of pages. There, you know what? I don't know if it would be edifying to you or me or anyone to watch me slog for the next 90 minutes or so, putting all of that in its different compartments. I don't know if that would be enjoyable. What I should really do is after I end the stream, I'll, 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 I'll film maybe myself putting it together, and then I'll do a uh, uh, yeah, time lapse. This is the cool thing about this. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do live streams so badly is you're all joining me here uh, for this moment in time. I'll repost this in a few days or a week later so other people who missed it can watch it. 
And I can also take this and crunch it down, edit all the boring parts out, which would make this about a two minute piece, and then you know throw in a time lapse and speed things up and have a third, uh, third thing out of it. So if you're not into live streams, you don't have to watch that, you can watch the condensed thing. And I plan to do this very same thing when we play through games. So I have this whole list of games that I wanna play through uh, solo, and we're gonna do the live stream thing where it's very, very long and very, very boring, and maybe you have me open and uh, keeping an eye on me in the corner of your eye at work, but then if you wanna see the condensed version of how I made all my moves and, and just like a 15 or 20 minute really super tight edited version of a playthrough of a solo version of a game, then I'll have that for you too, and you can pick and choose what you wanna watch, or watch them both if you're crazy. I don't know what you wanna do. Um, Maybe close out with you eating all the candy and we can get your blood sugar levels. Yes, I've got, I've got the, uh, the heart rate monitor that I can put on. I don't know if that's the same thing. But uh, yes, this is, to, this is the day that I become diabetic. You watch and see. Uh, what else can we say about this? There's just more rule books and they're very... Oh my lord. Oh, I forgot that this was even a thing. Oh, good thing I went through this. Art and storybook. I mentioned you can't really get the most out of anachrony unless you read the story. And look at this. This is all like stories of all the different factions and where they came from. So if you, this is great, if you really want to immerse yourself in this crazy dystopian, slightly off-putting, sci-fi, weird-ass, paperback novel world, they've given you all the material to do that. They're not holding back at all. So that's cool. I don't know how many people are, like, you're not going to be able to take this over to a family gathering and be like, hey, mom. <laughs> It's, it's funnier if you know my mom. We're going to play this game called Anachrony, but first, it's, it's just pages 16 to 23. That's that's just for your faction. That's all you got to read. It's not going to happen. I have, tr <laughs> I have trouble getting people to play like the whatnot cabinet, so that's not going to be a thing. Uh, <laughs> back to chat. You got to admire the work. Absolutely. And not. I don't think all of this artwork even appears in the game some of it does a bunch of it does actually but i noticed that when mind clash was being so generous with me and and sending me assets they were sending me stuff that wasn't on on boards or anything i was like why why did you commission this art why did you pay somebody to draw this it's not even in the game but they're really interested in world building you notice a lot of publishers are doing that too instead of just doing a one-off game and you notice it with terraforming mars and the Ares expedition they want an IP, right? They want a whole universe. Somebody said that this would be great to base a movie on. Well, I, I mean, I think that's where we're headed. So instead of watching tripe like that that battleship movie, uh, instead we can get like cool stuff based on Anachrony eventually down, you know, down the road. Uh, Michael was saying something about Dice Throne. Dice Throne, he says, is totally awesome. As Josh Hunter said, it's incentivizing you since uh, the rule update 2.2 for attacking the strongest player. Uh, so that's probably what we, we played without. Instead, they were attacking the weakest and angriest player <laughs> who didn't want to play anymore. Dean mm, uh, explains he's talking to Calm. Mm, do -do, do -do. If your game needs a multi-page manual on how to pack it, it might just be too large. Side Noir, I disagree. Uh, please kick him. No, just kidding. <laughs> That's not too large. That's that's ridiculous. That's preposterous. I asked that question here. I'll put the poll back up if it works. Uh, it's not working. Uh, poll. Yes. What's what's the most audacious board game in your collection? I asked that off the top, and uh, I don't know if I saw too many responses. So maybe uh, file it in chat, sound off, and tell me what the most audacious board game in your collection is. The one that you spent the most money on, the one that has the craziest components in it, the one that takes up the most table space. Are you noticing that board games take up more of your table now? I don't know if it started with the, the forest animal tree game that I shall not name, but uh, that is a big pig. And it seems every board game I get now, like Scythe is ridiculous, and they're like, oh, wait, 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 you ain't seen nothing yet. You can spend an extra 10 bucks to make it a foot wider, which I recently did despite not owning a table that's big enough for that expanded board. Ah, I have a sickness. I don't know. They're, they're just getting huge. And I think it's partly because when you go to a conference and everybody's around tables playing games, um, nobody's going to care about your little card game. But if people wander by Anachrony, they go, what the hell is that? And you say, well, it's, it's Anachrony. And then they'll go and buy a copy. I think that's the idea. I know fights are fought by people with retail uh, products to, to like shelf space fights, right? So this is why, this is one of the reasons why 
board games aren't a consistent size because every so often some joker goes well we got a game called black angel you know and it goes on the shelf and it sticks out and doesn't doesn't it's in danger of falling on you as you're going by the stacks in the store uh just because they want to get that attention I don't know what it's like to desperately want people's attention. I have no idea what they. Uh, uh, I've seen this story. The, the story. The storybook is good. Com says. I really admire the hours of love they put into the game and the universe. Yeah, and they're doing something. Oh wait, uh, Fudge says. Uh, <laughs> Ekin says I'd love to read their story. Well, buckle up because here we go. Not really. I do have a poetry reading for you in a moment though. Um, <laughs> giving this, the rest of us homework. Isn't the terraforming Mars universe just our universe in the future? I mean, that depends on how successful you think the rich people fleeing to Mars are, are actually going to be, I guess. Uh, next stream, Anachrony Storytime with Ryan. Yeah, it'll just be me in a big overstuffed wingback chair in a, <laughs> in, a, in a smoking jacket just reading you the story of Anachrony. I could do it. Don't tempt me. I could... I, that's a thought. I might do that. Uh, a paragraph. It's possibly, possibly the worst thing DM Explains says. So DM Explains is not in for the uh, the reading. The music is way too loud in the... Uh, are we talking about the, the poll? Thank you. I will adjust. And we'll get Aiken's name in the scroll. Sorry about that. Uh, Scythe, Don says, and Yido Deluxe are the two huge ones in, in Don's collection. Deem Explain says, I think this is largely story time with Ryan. Yeah, I know, I know. I've been in the house for a year and a half not talking to anybody, so sorry if I'm going off a little bit. Uh, Fudge says, Anachrony Infinity Box is uh, audacious in his or her collection. Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. That one's silly, huge. That Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, if you haven't seen it, and it's not to be confused with, what's the other one called Sea, Land, and Air or something that's in a box like this? So if you see it at the store, you think, what the heck is Ryan talking about? No, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea is a uh, Scott Elms uh, jam. He's the guy who did uh, the Tiny Epic series. And the base game is like, oh, da, da, da. and then it's like, oh, by the way, we got an expansion pack. No, ma. And then like, oh, there's another faction. No. So like, I don't know, it's like four or five boxes. And they're all probably as big as the Terraforming Mars Collector's Edition box. It's it's dorky. Uh, Scythe Noir says, Dwellings of Eldervale Collector's Edition is the most audacious thing that he's ever had. However, there are a few bigger ones coming. Let us know what the bigger ones are. I... I don't know if I could name them, except, oh wait, what's um, what's the one that's like Alien? It's in multiple boxes. You tell me in the, you, of course. This is, this is fun because you know, I don't know if you know this, you probably guess, but when I make these videos, I don't speak very well, very consistently or fluently. And when I do these these videos, I'll be like, da 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 I'm trying to think of something. Da, and I'll just hang like this. Duh. And I'll make sure not to move my hand or my mouth. I'll just be in this slack jawed gape position, like, uh, until I think of the thing I'm trying to think of. And then I'll pick it up from there. And of course, I go into the edit suite and I cut out the, you know, 25 seconds of duh, of stupid out. And I look like. I don't know if I look like the smartest person in the world, but I'm certainly more coherent in an edited form. So uh, I can't remember. Nemesis, thank you. I didn't even look. Oh, Nemesis. Yes, Calm says Nemesis. I remembered it before you said it in chat. Yeah, Nemesis is huge. I mentioned my friend Doc. He has everything in um, Too Many Bones, and that game is very aptly named because it's, it's, it's silly. Uh, Michael Joyce says Mid uh, Midara. I don't know Madara very well, but I'll have to look up pictures. Michael says, we have all the Dice Throne packs plus Dice Throne Adventures. Yeah, that's a huge one. Uh, in total, this needs more space than Anachrony Infinity Box, I guess. You're not wrong. I haven't seen what this looks like. And the fact that they have modules, I'm not I'm usually a big fan of uh, expansion content that's modules because it's like the designers are saying like, hey, you, you, you pick what goes on the table. I'm like, no, you designed it. You, pick, you prescribe the experience for me. I don't want to fumble my way through all this content. You tell me what to play. Maybe that's just me. Airland sees the little card game. Yeah, Don says. Uh, Blood on the Clock Tower is going to be my most audacious when it finally delivers. Why, I can does it give you an actual clock tower in the game? So many people have mentioned that, and it looks like, from the very little I know about it, it's just a trumped-up uh, werewolf, isn't it? Tell me what's, what's in it. Um, 
you get the upgraded bits and tokens for the games. It's all about you guys are talking to each other. Nemesis, Nemesis is aliens. Yes, I got it before the forty-five second delay in the pylon. Uh, do, 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 do. November thirtieth is the expected delivery for Botki. I forget what Botki stands for. On the pictures, they look like you guys are talking amongst yourselves about other bits and things. Um, cool. Let me look at my little cheat sheet. Do I have anything else to show you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I was going to do a poetry reading, wasn't I? Poetry reading. So I guess, I'm, I mean, we've had fun. It's 229. I guess I can kind of wind it down, uh, knowing that I'm not going to go through the falderall of putting this all back together. But I wanted to mention, a number of you are patrons on mine and thank you so much for showing up and giving you, me your support in my inaugural live stream flight it's been a long time leading up to this michael by the way i should mention is is extreme he was he was our pope for the longest time he's stepped down from his position but i hear there's a smoke-filled room out there somewhere and they're 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 deciding on a new pope so i'm very excited to see who that is uh but uh michael has contributed uh, tremendously financially to the channel and with Michael so I wish I could flip the camera around but I was really nervous all the tech uh, made me really nervous because I was worried it was gonna fail and I'm the kind of guy who can who doesn't like to spend a lot of money because he doesn't have very much money and I like to coast on sort of like just good enough tech you know cables that are tied and duct taped together and stuff you know stuff that I have kicking around from 1997 or whatever so I was going into this live stream and to look at myself on the monitor, I had this little busted old, you know, 15 inch panel monitor TV thing. And it, I knew it wasn't going to be sufficient. I'm like, oh, what do I do? So, and I couldn't read chat. I couldn't even see what you guys are saying. So I went out this morning and I purchased, I want to talk about ostentatious. I purchased a large, one of the cheapest ones they had, but I purchased a large panel TV, so now I can see your call. Oh, Colin, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Don't everybody go, because there's a poetry reading, and I know that you've been here this entire time to hear that poetry reading. Um, but thank you so much, uh, Michael, for, for helping me out with that. Uh, and, and it's given me the confidence to finally do it. Michael's requested uh, that I do a live stream where I play through Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. If you find that interesting, Cheryl did not want me to do it because we've been playing that game together and I think we're in about the fifth mission. So then I came up with this concept of, of uh, Adventure Night, which is where I pick a day of the week and we'll play those games that have chapters and have sort of procedural or, or episodic content to them, Sherlock Holmes being one of them. I even bought a costume for you. I mean, it's not as fancy as, oh, look, I bought... I have not only one, but I have two pairs of these slick, futuristic 80s glasses that I can't see a thing in. Uh, but yeah, I bought a costume to play Sherlock Holmes for you. Uh, and uh, that's just been the longest time coming. I've been so nervous about the tech, but thank you again for all your support. All these patrons have had as one of their perks uh, poems being written for them by me. Uh, I decided to sit down and, and write a poem for everybody and foolishly I thought that I could get it all done in a single month through like 40 backers. That was not the case. Uh, we're now in the th third month of Poetry Month and I'm still devoted to getting a poem written for every single person, including Michael, our Pope. I will write him a Pope-sized poetic edda. Uh, but this one... Uh, I'm going to put my glasses on to read it, not because I need them to see, just because when you're reading poetry, it seems apropos to put glasses on. I don't know. Uh, this one was uh, the, one of the ones that I thought came out quite well for a backer named Dave Beck. <clears throat> I'm going to take a drink and I'll hum while I'm doing it because that's what I, it's the Canadian thing to do after all. <laughs> mm hmm. That's some good Canadian H20. All right, are you ready? Okay. Yes, DM explains. I will film the reboxing after we're done here, and we almost are. The poem is called, for Dave Beck, it's called Whoops. Pour one out for our dear friend Dave, who hasn't yet actually died. He wanted us to show up at his own funeral to see who among us would cry. We all put on a good little show of bawling and rending our clothes. At the end of it all, someone opened the lid and David's corpse creepily rose. 
We had a good laugh, but heard several gasps and loud thumps as a group hit the ground. We'd forgotten to tell David's relatives, see, and now several funerals abound. If you're excited at the prospect of somebody writing a poem for about you, knowing nothing about you, uh, then by all means consider becoming a backer. You can do it uh, for as little as, uh, as I think, a cent a month. Uh, Rado, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say this, but Rado cracked the code and realized that even though my minimum, uh, Dave, what are you doing? Gives you, that's not a real number. What? <laughs> making me embarrassed. Uh, Dave just wanted to get on the high scoreboard with that super chat, but thank you very much, Dave. Uh, <laughs> actually, I know why he did that. Here's the story of why Dave just gave me 50 bucks in the super chat. Because I went over to his his house and he was determined to order food for us for, for some for some roti. And uh, and so we ate the roti, but it was like Dave was eating and then he fed like my entire family and my friend Michael Todd. And uh, I was like, can I give you some money? He said, no, 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 absolutely not. And so on my way out of his house, I slipped 50 bucks next to the soap in his bathroom, which he's no doubt discovered and is now funneled back to me through super chat. All right, that, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair, that makes sense. Back to Patreon. Rado cracked the code and he found out that you don't even have to pay the minimum on Patreon. This counts for anybody else that you want to go support on Patreon. If their minimum is like five bucks on my channel is one buck, you can be like, screw that, 37 cents, and then they'll dig you 37 cents a month. So for 37 cents a month, I will write you a personal poem. Please don't all sign up at once because as I said, I've, I'm struggling already getting through all of the poems for people. Uh, so generous as I can. Don't believe it. He's not generous at all. That's just, while well, he is with the dinner, but that's just, he's, he's giving, he's giving my money back to me. Uh, great. Uh, unless anybody has anything else to say, I'm going to fumble with buttons until I can close out this stream. But thank you so much for joining me. If you're watching the recap of this, please know that I'm going to release an edited version where I speed up putting the rest of this back and cut a lot of the unnecessary banter from the beginning, which is all of it. And I hope that uh, you'll join me uh, the next time I do streams. I've got so much planned, you guys. So much planned. I'm going to paint things. We're going to play games. We're gonna, uh, it's going to be more puzzles. And I'm going to do giveaways. I have things to give away. Oh, my God. Oh, oh I'm so excited. Thank you for joining me on the uh, on, on the maiden voyage. And I think if I press, if I, which button do I have to press? I don't know. I've never done this before. Join me as we find out which button it is. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, thank you. Uh, see you again next time.